Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairman. Uh, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Uh, today, it is my honor and privilege to bring uh, H.R. 2029, the fiscal year 2016 military construction, veterans affairs, and related agencies appropriations bill to the House of Representatives. Uh, I present this bill alongside my, my good friend and, and ranking member on the subcommittee, Sanford Bishop uh, from Georgia, uh, who has been an, a, an essential partner in the way. Uh, I greatly appreciate the participation and support of our committee members uh, both sides of the aisle as we consider priorities and funding levels uh, for the important programs in our bill. Uh, we analyzed the budget request, developed questions, uh, held oversight hearings to hear directly from members of all the services, uh, the Department of Defense leadership, Secretary of the VA, the VA Inspector General, and the directors of four related agencies. Uh, we received over 700 requests from members, again, from both sides of the aisle, and gave full consideration to each one. It has been a busy string, and we did our best to accommodate those uh, member requests. As we consider this bill, I can't proceed further without noting that this subcommittee has a, a formidable level of support from the chair and ranking member of the full committee. Uh, thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, and Mrs. Lowy, uh, your attention, oversight, and genuine care uh, for the military and veterans has been inspiring. Uh, and uh, uh, to, to, to round out our, our team, uh, we have some great su uh, support from our professional staff, Sue Quantius, uh, Sarah Young, uh, Tracy Russell, Maureen Hollihan, and Matt Washington on the committee staff, and Heather Smith, Drew Kent, and Sean Snyder on my personal staff. We couldn't do it without all of them. Uh, HR 2029 demonstrates our firm commitment to fully supporting the nation's veterans and service members. Our investment of nearly $77 billion for military construction and the Veterans Administration at 6 percent, 6 percent over last year's level is unprecedented. This bill provides comprehensive support for service members, military families, and veterans. It supports our troops with facilities and uh, services necessary to maintain readiness and morale at bases here in the States and around the world. It provides for the de Defense Department schools and health clinics that take care of our military families. And the bill funds our veterans' health care systems uh, to ensure that our promise to care for those who have sacrificed to this great nation uh, continues as those men and women uh, re return home. We owe this to our veterans and are committed uh, to sustained oversight so that programs deliver what they promise and taxpayers are well served by the investments we make. On the military construction side, uh, this bill provides a total of $7.7 billion for military construction projects and family housing, including uh, base and um, overseas contingency operations funding, an increase of $904 million, that's nearly 12 percent uh, above the enacted fiscal year 2015 level, and $755 million uh, below the President's request. This funding meets DOD's most critical needs, including priorities uh, for the combatant commanders in, in UCOM, CENTCOM, AFRICOM, and, and PACOM. It provides $607 million uh, for military medical facilities, including the one at Landstuhl, Germany. It provides $334 million for the Department of Defense education facilities for construction or renovation of 10 schools. It supports our Guard and reserve through $512 million for facilities in 28 states. It fully funds military uh, family housing at $1.4 billion, and it provides $150 million uh, for the NATO Security Investment Program, which is, a, a, which is $30 million over the budget request. Uh, on the Veterans Affairs side, the legislation includes a total of $163.2 billion in combined discretionary and mandatory funding uh, for the Department of Veterans Administration, uh, Veterans Affairs. Uh, discretionary funding uh, alone for veterans programs in the bill is $68.7 billion. Total fiscal year uh, 2016 discretionary funding is $3.6 billion above 2015. It's a 5.6 percent increase. $1.4 billion below the request. Uh, $3 billion of this increase was advance funded. On the VA medical services side, the bill funds uh, VA medical services at $48.6 billion. That includes $970 million that the VA came back and asked for. On top of the advance funding uh, from last year, we stretched, we stretched pretty far to do this, and uh, we haven't funded this second bite in the House before.
And it's tough to find $970 million in any budget environment, but this committee did, showing again the level of bipartisan commitment we have to our veterans. Uh, for disability claims, we provide the full request uh, for the Veterans Benefits Administration, which is a $163 million increase over fiscal year 2015, and the full request for the Board of Veterans' Appeals. Uh, the bill will enhance transparency and accountability at the VA uh, through further oversight and an increase uh, for the VA Office of Inspector General's independence audits and investigations. And I can assure you the uh, Inspector General's office has been very, very busy. Uh, this legislation also contains $233 million uh, for the modernization of the VA electronic health record and includes language restricting funding until the VA demonstrates progress on the system's functionality and interoperability. This is a major concern to all of us on both sides of the aisle, and I know the chairman in particular has been outspoken uh, about this matter. But it's something that all of us, Republican and Democrat, we want to see fixed. Uh, on construction issues, uh, major construction within the VA is funded at $562 million, which is the same level as fiscal year 2015. The bill provides funding for hospital replacement and allows the VA to continue to correct seismic safety issues and deficiencies. We did not fund the more than double, but double the budget request for construction to face the impact of gross mismanagement of the Colorado VA hospital construction, which resulted in a $930 million cost overrun. That's not a typo, a $930 million cost overrun which is nearly twice the entire VA major construction line item. We've also cracked down on oversight uh, with multiple restrictions. We fund the, the, uh, the American Battle Monuments Commission, uh, the Armed Forces Retirement Homes, uh, Arlington National Cemetery, and the U.S. Uh, Court of uh, Appeals for Veterans at, at the requested uh, uh, funding levels. In closing, this is a very solid bipartisan bill that is focused on the needs of service members, veterans, and all their families. We are $4.6 billion over the fiscal year 2015 level. Again, nearly 6% increase, not a cut. We have provided for our, our military and veterans to the very best level we can. Did we fund every last dime requested? No. Not every idea has merit, and not every project is mission critical. We did not fund some projects. We cut uh, some requested increases, and we rescinded funds. These were fair decisions and part of our responsibility as appropriators. We've, we've, leave, we've received a lot, of a lot of criticism for the actions we've taken uh, very recently. Uh, it, it started with an email campaign from the VA Legislative Affairs Office, uh, then a statement of administration policy, and, 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 and last, some of the VSOs have joined in. Let me tell you, in my time uh, before I was chairman of the subcommittee, and certainly in my time since I, I took over this position, I can say with absolute certainty, VA's problems stem from poor management, not too little money. Poor management, not too little money. And I will say that again, the problems we encounter at the VA, time after time, whether it's it, it, Phoenix patient, uh, weightless scandal, the claims and benefits mess in Philadelphia, or, or the Denver hospital construction debacle, show that the VA's problem is management, not money. And for the VA to complain uh, about a 6% increase rather than an 8% increase, and to call a 6% increase is a cut. They call that a cut. Only in Washington, D.C. can someone call a 6% increase over last year a cut. Everywhere else in America, it's a 6% increase, but not in this town. I amazing to me, and particularly from a, from a department that has so many severe managerial problems at this time. We need to be diligent with oversight. At the same time, be a helping hand to the department. Uh, there is a way out of the morass. But more money without the necessary management reforms is not the answer. I have talked to many members about the VA. And just last night in the Rules Committee, got quite an earful there, and truly members are in agreement that we must help the VA transform uh, because that transformation is crucial to serve veterans properly and to respect the taxpayers footing the bill. And by the way, that frustration I've heard from members is from both sides of the aisle, as was the case I heard last night in the, uh, in, in the, uh, in the Rules Committee. We will do a lot of good with this bill. It is fair, it is balanced. And that a 6% increase over last year it is generous. 
On behalf of our service members, military members, I urge your support of this legislation. Let's take care of those who sacrifice for our country. It's time to do the right thing. Support the bill. At this time, I would reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman.